Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, in this video, we're gonna talk about the HTML5 document structure here, and we're gonna dive right in. Now, what, what I'm showing here right now on the screen is an example of uh, the last version of HTML. Um, this is actually an X, XHTML 1.0 transitional you know, within the X, HTML4 spec. And uh, if you've done programming uh, before in HTML, you probably use something that looks very similar to this. But HTML5, what we're gonna do is create a new document, and I'll explain some of the differences. And if you've never coded HTML, you can just jump right in. You don't really need to worry about the legacy stuff. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and create a new file. We're in TextMate here, and I'll call this HTML5.html. So we're good. And here's our blank document. Okay, now the first thing I want to look at that uh, every document in HTML requires is a document type. And if we go back to our HTML4 example, this is what the doc type used to look like. It was pretty long and essentially is not really making a lot of sense in the English language. You have doc type, HTML public, and then you know this long string of characters talking about the DDT and the XHTML 1.0 transitional. It's in English, and here's a link that nobody ever reads. And anyway, this works well for machines, but not so much for human beings, and it's complicated. And so what we're going to do is in HTML5, I'm going to show you how HTML5 deals with the doc type, and we'll go ahead and type this out. And what you're going to use is the doc type tag, so it's going to be uppercase D-O-C-T-Y-P-E, and the document type is HTML, and we're done. That's it. That's it. That's the only thing you need to do for HTML5 in the spec, and it's amazing. Uh, I, you know, some people look at this and they think, well, wow, how arrogant that they don't think there's ever going to be anything beyond HTML5, and that's not true. Um, the whole idea of a markup language and this whole evolution of HTML is that it is an evolution, and when you start putting version numbers on things, you get into legacy support with documents, and this isn't really a fair thing to do to a markup language. So the idea here is that we're going to avoid using version numbers in the spec. You can have a formal version ever. There will be an HTML6 probably one day uh, in 7 and 8 and so on and so forth but uh, they're not included in the, in the redesigned spec for HTML. The other thing that's really nice about this is shoot, I can memorize this, you know, I don't have to remember a weird link and all that stuff. And really no one did before they automated it, but, uh, it makes it much easier to, to uh, deal with documents from scratch. The next thing we're going to deal with is, uh, the HTML tag, which is, you know, basically like everything you've seen before, I'll go ahead and close that out. You're going to have a open and close HTML tag. And then inside that, we're going to have a head tag. So this is no different than, than what you've seen before. And let's go ahead and close the head tag. And we'll drop down and we'll do a body tag. And so these elements are the same as what we've always had with HTML. Close the body tag, and we're done. OK, now let's talk about, real quick before we jump into the head, uh, in the HTML tag. Um, I'm going to list two attributes here that are going to specify a couple things, and mainly these deal with search engines, and I'm going to talk about this in a second. Let's talk about the uh, the DIR attribute, which basically is a directional attribute, and I'm going to list this as LTR. I'll explain these in one second. I'm going to give it a second one, which is L-A-N-G, language equals E-N dot or excuse me, dash US. Okay, now what I have assigned this is basically this is not so much for the viewer um, looking at your web page, but this is for things like search engines, uh, speech recognition programs, things like that. And this is really uh, important for accessibility. And what I've told it is basically um, I'm going to code my text here, uh, and the language is going to be set to English in the US. Um, you know, there are obviously other options you have on here. And that DIR, that direction, the LTR stands for left to right. Okay, so there is an RT to right to left. Now, why would you want that? Well, not all languages in plain text display uh, like English does left to right. Like, for instance, Hebrew, um, you know, there's Chinese characters, things like that, that that display right to left. So those two things, and that's really as complex as this gets, those tell the um, uh, anything that's machine reading your document, like a search engine, like I said, or a text recognition or something like that, it's text to speech, uh, what language is and which direction it's going to be read. Okay. And so we're good there. Let's go into the head document here. And I'm going to drop down a line. And what we're going to do is add the character set. Now, let's go back to the HTML4 example here for a second. And the uh, character set here, we used a meta tag. And then we had to have an HTTP equivalent, which was content type. Then you have the content attribute, which was text slash HTML, semicolon, and then character set, if you're going to set this in UTF-8. Now, it's beyond the scope of this episode to go into Unicode and what character sets are. I generally prefer to use UTF-8 because it allows me to drop, um, you know, 
other languages in here and things like, uh, you know, an accent or an umlaut or something like that, and it'll display correctly. And so UTF-8 is very versatile. And uh, if you're interested in different character sets, you know, there are a wealth of resources if you Google them. Um, but this is the one I typically use, which is UTF-8, uh, which I recommend too. But anyway, you have a lot of stuff in those tags. The HTML5 is completely redesigned now. All I have to do is we're going to, again, use the meta tag. So let's say meta. And then I'm going to go character set, char set equals, and watch this, UTF-8. Done. Through. Over with. Etc. That's easier, huh? And basically, it's just, you know, the document, if it's HTML5, understands all that other stuff that's, you know, seems redundant to keep repeating every time you write an HTML document. And you're left with just this. You just need to declare the character set. Okay, now the next thing I might have is, uh, is a title in here. So we'll go ahead and put our title tag. And uh, let's close that out. And I'm going to go ahead and we'll put our title in here, which is going to be HTML5. And uh, it doesn't matter, you know, these things don't have to go in a specific order or, any, or anything. But uh, the other thing I want to talk about is the script tag, okay? So if we look at our HTML4 example, again, here's our script type, okay? It's an open and a close tag because you can drop JavaScript between the tags. And this one specifically links to uh, an external document for our JavaScripts, which is script.js, that's all that is. And then I gave it a type, which is text slash JavaScript. Well, again, redundancy because, you know, how many people out there who were coding in XHTML or anything before that ever coded in anything that wasn't text or did a script that wasn't text JavaScript. And so you can probably guess that we've simplified that again now. And all I have to do is type script source equals. And then what we're going to do is say, we'll make up a file name. I don't actually have one script.js done. That's it. Oh, actually, and it doesn't self-close. This is this is one of those weird tags that does not self-close, so we have to close it with another tag. And the reason is is because you can put scripts between the two. Okay, so there you have it. That's that's as deep as HTML5 is going to go on that. So you can see that already. This is a lot easier. Okay, HTML4. Let's talk about one other tag, and then we'll wrap this up. I want to talk about the link tag, and we use these to link up external style sheets. And once again, we have redundancy here in this type attribute text slash CSS. Well, of course, it's going to be a CSS. Okay, you don't need to tell the browser that. We will keep the relation tag, the rel tag, as a style sheet because you do have options there that can still change. So in HTML5, all I have to do for the link tag, let's drop a line, is say link. This one is self-closing. And I can say, um, okay, hang on, sorry. Did I get that right? Yeah, it is self-closing still. Uh, the href in that, okay, which is the link to where that is, is going to be, um, I'll just call it styles.css. Again, it's a, not a non-existent file at this point, but if I put one in, that's where it would be. And then I would say rel equals style sheet. And we're done. That's basically it. And this is one of the things I really love so far about HTML5. You know, sometimes as a programmer or a developer, you know, when new languages and new revisions come out of things, you get a little concerned, especially if you come from a flash background and, and ActionScript had a dramatic change from one to two and then again to three. And it's a lot of relearning and it's a lot of tightening up your chops. HTML5 is actually a lot easier, I think. Um, you know, I've done a, a comparison with XHTML here so you can see the differences if that's where you're coming from. If you're brand new to scripting or, or um, writing code or writing HTML, then this is all you need to know. It's fairly easy to do, and then I would continue to code as normal. Now, there are some other differences in things, and we're going to go through those in the next couple films here. So I will see you in the next one.